Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Art Hour of Literary Tales. I'm your host, Paul Krauss, and in this episode, we continue another exploration of the paintings of Peter Paul Rubens, turning from classical mythology to Christian mythology as we explore his great painting, St. George and the Dragon. Many of us are familiar with the story of St. George and the Dragon, just as we were with the story of the fall of Phaeton. St. George, a Christian soldier and member of Emperor Diocletian's Praetorian Guard, was martyred for his faith. The stories surrounding his life and legacy are numerous. Romance, soldiery, martyrdom. He was the closest thing to a Christian Hercules or Jason. His most famous myth is slaying the dragon on horseback, a testament to his military bravado and faith in God, which emerged in the age of knighthood and crusades in 11th century Europe. It has stuck with us ever since and is now the very image that is conjured up in our imagination as we encounter St. George. There is almost no depiction of St. George in the popular culture that does not depict him slaying the dragon. Rubens's grandiose painting is rich in biblical allusions. The dragon is representative of the serpent from the Garden of Eden and evokes the demonic darkness of Lucifer. The princess, beyond being a cultural contextual manifestation of the early troubadour romantic heritage of medieval Europe, is also the imagistic manifestation and symbol of the Christian church, the bride of Christ. The lamb that she clings to is innocence, which also, as a great symbol for Christ himself, furthers the signification that the princess is the bride of Christ. The two are intimately attached together, as you can see. She is clinging to the Lamb. The Church and Christ are inseparable. Of course, then there is the great saint himself. Seated on his brilliant and beautiful white stallion, the colors of goodness and purity, striking at the dragon from on high, God Christ coming to slay the forces of sin and darkness from above. It is, in this instance, also a symbolic allegory of the Incarnation, God coming down from the heavens to strike at the forces of sin and darkness below. The painting is, therefore, a retelling of the typological allegory of Christian theology and the cosmic struggle between good and evil, represented by St. George on his horse, coming from the area above the heavens, representing good, striking down at the serpent below, and the dark coloration that surrounds it, representing evil. What captivates the eyes is the action and passion that the painting contains. We see human and animal emotions rushing across the painting. It fills us, moves our own hearts and souls, and nearly overwhelms us to the point of sublimity. We are also moved and drawn to the color contrast between the light, the princess, the church, the lamb, Christ, St. George, God, and the darkness that divides the painting, the divisions of the two worlds, of heaven and hell, the city of God and the city of man, purity and sin. As you look at the painting, the color contrast becomes more apparent, and you can see the symbolism and the allegory of the two worlds, the two halves, the two natures, at war with each other. Our combatants are locked in cosmic battle, but we also know from the painting that good will triumph over evil. Light will expel the darkness. St. George, in this painting, in the moment being captured by Rubens, is about to deliver the culling blow against the dragon, though we are not privy to that decisive blow just yet. Rubens is, nevertheless, reminding us 
that the victory of good over evil is the reality of the cosmos that we live in, but he is also reminding us, even though it is implying the victory of goodness over evil, that we in our lives are much like St. George, locked in the midst of combat here and now. We are always engaged in this combat, this struggle, this battle against darkness, evil, and sin. And even though, as Christian theology proclaims, that goodness will win out in the end, our lives mirror that of St. George being captured in the painting. We are locked in struggle. We are locked in combat. Even if we know St. George is going to emerge victorious, even if we know the great cosmic battle between God and the serpent, Satan, is going to end with the triumph of God, again symbolized by St. George, we, in our own human experiences, are not privy to that final triumph. We are, as the painting captures, in the midst of that combat. And so it is also reminding us that even though we believe and we know from Revelation that goodness will triumph in the end, we must always be on guard like St. George is, ready to slay the forces of sin, darkness, and evil that threaten to consume us. St. George and the Dragon is, as I hope you can see, a wonderful retelling, a grand allegory and symbolic painting of our cosmic reality, depicting for us, through the use of a now explicitly Christian myth and story, the realities of good and evil, the Church, Christ, God, Satan, evil. It is a grand symbolism of the cosmic struggle of good and evil.